When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. Ruski, you're not here for the podcast, so uh, we're, we're, you're fired. You're done. You're a piece of fired. shit. Yeah. Fired. Fucking garbage. Well, now Jake cursed too much. I was going to use this for the intro, but it's ruined. Use yeah. beeps then. Beep it out. Beep. You're listening to the Bent Motorsports Podcast with the owner of Bent Motorsports, David Beckett, and his crew, Jacob Hunsinger, James Hernandez, and Jake Russo. Listen in as the guys discuss all things motorsports, including tech tips and current shop projects. Oh, we- Matter of fact, you know what I want to talk about? Uh, I want to talk about, we, I think we all decided we want to talk about, is what we think is the best four-wheel drive vehicle, maybe of all time, or maybe of a specific decade, or or just one that's just come out that's good. And uh, right from the dealer, though, like not one to fix up, but just what would you go buy uh, to 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 use right out of the dealer floor? That's just a great four-wheel drive. Hmm. But... So now you're talking about now, right? No, I'm talking about ever. Like you could say, let's st- let's start oh, off so you're by saying, saying off the dealer floor, like a Wagoneer from the 70s. Or yeah, something exactly. Like, that. like what, okay. in your opinion, if you could go back in time or to current, like what would you go out and buy right now? Because in your brain, that's the ultimate four wheel drive that came from a factory, but it's got to be factory. It's not something that you would, you know, put Dana 60s under it. It's no, this from the factory was the ultimate vehicle. That's the one I would love to drive right now. I would love to own that car. All right. Off the top, I'm going to say a 1985 Toyota pickup um, okay. because it came – this is the only year that it came with the 22 RE, so you get fuel injection and it had a solid front axle. It's the only year you can get fuel injection and a solid front axle. And they're super stout, um, box frames, uh, really good wheelbase as far as uh, that goes. and you had to be curious to see what the wheelbase is on that. I'm gonna look that up real quick. Why? What well, you said? 85 Toyota. 85 right? Toyota. Yeah. Probably in the like 107 range. It's got to be guess. right. It's got to be at that magic 100 number. I pretty it close. Was, I was actually pretty sure it's something around like 98 or 102 or something. Really? Yeah. They're pretty short. Hmm. Thing is, is, like discussing this is it's kind of comes at, at first. I'm like, oh, personal opinion. There's plenty of ones that I would love to have, but in reality, looking back at it, you have the JKs now that have you know. Off the showroom floor, you can have Dana 44s, you can have front and rear lockers, you can have sway bar disconnects. There's all kinds of things that you don't have to modify at all to take this thing out and be pretty competitive. Um, I guess just in comparison to your friends or whoever else has done some modifications to their TJ or whatever it is, there's these people, you know, come out with the Rubicon and they're killing it. They're 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 a very stout, very good vehicle, but, you know. Well, I they, think the Wrangler... The Jeep rank. Oh, by the way, the Toyota pickup one hundred and two point nine five. Boom, which I think is like it's the pretty same magic. as my LJ. It's pretty pristine. It's pretty <laughs> and it's the same as that Land Cruiser, the seventy three Land Cruiser FJ fifty five that we're using for our. Oh, that's swap. like one hundred four, isn't it? Yeah, but with the uh, shackles and leaf springs and everything that's had to upgrade oh. on that one, it brings it down to one hundred two or something. That's nice. So yeah, magic number. So eighty five Toyota four wheel drive pickup. Yeah, solid axles, fuel injected. Yeah, magic wheelbase. It's good to go. That's get, a sick pick. You have a for sure. You have the transmissions are really stout. The um, transfer cases are really simple. I, I I really enjoy the simplicity of that idea because I totally hear what Jake's saying. Where you can go and buy like a fully locked Rubicon off the floor. Yeah. But just with how manufacturing has gone in the last decade or so, actually even in the nineties, uh, American companies started to skimp out. Um, yeah, I think the Jeep Wrangler. Okay, let's start with the Jeep. So the Willys came out, right? So yeah. You know, the Willys back in the day, post-war or whatever. Yeah. Um, that one is rad, but it's a flathead, flathead engine, right? I mean, it's it's rad, but it's definitely not, like, of all time, you know? Yeah. Um, so then you get into the CJs, right? CJ5s. That was the civilian version of it. That was they pretty good. But so they didn't, damn small. Yeah, they didn't really man. nail it until they got the CJ7, right? Yeah. The CJ7, which was, I should know this off the top of my head, 76 to 86. That was the decade for the CJ7. Yeah. And then we come into the Wranglers. Right, which would have been eighty seven to ninety seven. Then you get the YJ, the YJ, which was just like, what were you? I don't know. In my opinion, they, they're you know they're cool, but I don't know. It was just yeah. Why'd you why'd you steer away to the square headlights? Like nobody liked that. 
I think the Jeep, if we were to pick a Jeep that was the best Jeep out of the factory for that you sure, didn't have to do anything to. ZJ. It's <laughs> for sure not the unibody car. Uh, would be this the Rubicon. Any of the yeah. year that the Rubicon was available, whether it was in the TJ or whether it was in the, the, the JK or even the new JL Rubicon, whatever. But I think the Rubicon Wranglers have to be in the top five no matter what, just because yeah. those vehicles, I mean, they call it the Rubicon because it'll do the Rubicon. Will an 85 Toyota do the Rubicon right out of the factory floor? Could, could Probably you get not lockers because... with those is my question. No, I wonder if you can get those the... from the factory. So that was actually my other pick because of that reason would be uh, post-93 FJ80. Because you have the same, it's the same axles that are underneath. What's pre ninety three FJ eighty? Uh, it just has a different engine that's not as good. I think it's the FZ and stuff like the FZE. There's a bunch of Land Cruiser guys who are like, he's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're sorry. stupid, James. You're a dummy. <laughs> FFE, actually, sorry. And uh, so that they they just solve a lot of things. Is a so wait, car. what year? Uh, ninety three to ninety. Eight, ninety three, ninety seven, right? Because ninety eight oh. to 07 is the one hundred series. Yeah, and those is. have IFS, right? Those are aren't those torsion. No, those the, are the one hundred. Oh, the one hundred. Yeah, the yeah. one hundred series Which became independent. Right? I've I've driven, and they're actually super duper comfortable. Well, it's a it's what they're meant for. I know. To drive on the fucking road. They're pretty nice. Pretend like you're cool. Now they're not. They don't have the man. FJ eighty axles are burly, and they came locked front and back from the from the uh, factory, which is awesome. Um, they're big on the inside. They're just like really stout. Um, and so I would go with one of those, especially because just as far as comfort goes, Mm -hmm. um, they're pretty plush. Um, yeah. As as long as, I mean, it's never going to be the same as an IFS truck on the road, but you can really run those over. Now those do have a longer wheelbase, but you know, those are what they're using down in Australia to go way deep out there. Lots sure. Of everybody. Well, yeah. I think we can all agree that Toyotas are fairly reliable. Yeah, yes. that's true. The Forerunner was pretty good, even without a locker or the rear locker. That uh, ABS system that they have implemented to do s- somewhat what a locker does, it works pretty well. Yeah. So, what Gen Forerunner would you pick if you could pick any other gens of Forerunner? A Forerunner, probably the third gen. Really, not fourth gen? No. No. I don't know the the five VZ. Oh, four to oh eight. The 5VZ FE motor, I think that's what it was. Uh, it's super reliable. Um, it's kind of like the 3VZ, but just has, uh, what was it? It's bored over, and I don't know, the 3VZ was blowing head gaskets left and right. The 5VZ, people know about that. They've kept it. Uh, oh, hello. Hey, look who it is, everybody. Oh, hey, hey everybody. Russo. Just to let you know, Russo showed up. That's yeah. cool. He actually wants to be a nice, part of the podcast. Nice of you to join us today. Yeah. Go lock the door. <laughs> um, But... It's a really reliable vehicle. There's a lot of aftermarket support for it, as I'm sure there is for the fourth gen. But I don't know, just d- doing the, the suspension work to the third gen that I had for a while and seeing what it could do. Uh, it just it was it was good. It was a, it was a nice uh, it was a great ride. It did everything that we did. You know, it made the the Scout people with the lockers and the Rubicon people with the lockers and 35s look like fools. So. Lockers yeah. from the factory are definitely a really big deal. I wish that that which, would have happened. Which, when we talk about the Jeep Rubicon, this is why, you know, the Rubicon is probably over all of the decades, the longest span of the best overall off-roader has got to be the Rubicon because that thing comes factory lockers, comes factory with Dana 44's front and rear. I mean, it comes with factory really, really nice stuff. So, Russo, to get you up to speed since you're late, is we're talking, yeah, about, what are we talking about what we – what we think is the best four-wheel drive vehicle uh, ever made that right out of the factory? Probably a Daewoo Lante. A uh, what? Daewoo Lante. See, this is why. This is why he's. This is why. He didn't show up. Oh, we're not yeah, talking maybe, about rallying, no. Maybe if we didn't okay. answer the door, he would have not come in. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, all right. So, right. answer, yeah, answer, answer yeah. the question. I don't know. That's tough. I mean, I'd probably have to say the same thing. Like a Jeep or the XJ is like tried and true even though that is a unibody which kind of is like XJ? the downfall yeah <laughs> seriously from, get up from, to speed on, on this conversation floor. we're already at factory, factory lockers floor. like squ- freaking boxed frames we're all we're yeah. you know, so here's here's the deal you can't 30s, you can't go oh. buy it and then, and then it. fix it up you gotta oh, go okay. buy it's it just as it is that's and next wheel it. and it can be brand new you gotta buy it and like wheel right it. now 
Sure. Yes. Right now, to to but but you could be. Let's say it, just a brand new car. What was the best off road brand new car? James, your can, hand is can up. Can I potentially, Before, when the, in this going back in time scenario, also go overseas? Sure, uh, sure I don't care. It's global. Yeah. This is a oh, global nice. question. Cool. Okay. Oh, you're gonna say like one of the, what are the Nissan Patrol or the? Those are cool. There's as just fuck. some really cool diesel diesel Land Cruisers and Toyotas came with a diesel option um, back in the day. They still do, but we don't get those yeah. because thanks, Carb. Thanks. Yay. Word up. The <laughs> Clean Air Board Association, whatever their name so. is. Go on. I don't know. Dude. Honestly, the new the new Forerunners, like the TRD Pro, those things are bad to the bone. Factory lockers, they have that KDSS, which has like a hydraulically controlled sway bar that'll either like stiffen or loosen, depending if you're crawling, it'll like loosen up and let you articulate where um you know, if you're obviously on the street, you want that thing to be stiff, and it kind of counteracts you going around corners and stuff like that. The thing feels super solid. Technology, yeah. 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 So, yeah, the I new don't know. ones are I mean, definitely very, very still, capable. That's pretty ISS. insane. Like, you don't but if have you had to pick, if you could clearance. pick right now, if you could pick, see, because I, I would mm. contest that the FJ40 is probably one of the best off roading vehicles ever. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, that I'd I bet you if that. I went down and bought, you know, a 74 to 83 FJ40 from the dealer, brand new, and I had it today, and I went to uh, John Bull with Probably a guy right in a brand that. new Rubicon JL, that we would both get through that similarly, which says a lot for a vehicle that was built in 74. Did Absolutely. that have fa- factory lockers? I don't know. I don't know if the it did. FJ40 back then? Yeah. No, I'm pretty I don't sure. think it did. I'm pretty certain it didn't. Right? Yeah, I'd have to look oh, it up. Know. We have to fact check that. But I don't know. I think that vehicle is uh, the the FJ40 uh, is pretty uh, capable. Because you got to think like short wheelbase, your approach and departure angle are like pretty much look nothing. At you. Yeah, the I'm on it. Terminologies, all gross road. stuff. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's probably super low geared and everything. You know, yeah. that thing's ready to go right out, right off the yeah. lot. The uh, what was it? The T18. I think it was the T18. Don't touch that. Uh, the transmission that came in the CJ5, there was one option on it, and the low, the first gear, it, in, in, uh, as well as like the transfer case, I think it was a Dana 300, super low. First gear in that transmission was like six something to one. Like it, it is, it's ridiculous. So those crawled pretty well, but the only issue was is they had those, uh, I think it had a Dana 20 in the rear, just a garbage, garbage rear, rear axle. So what about a 66 to 77 Bronco? Uh, I was about to say. I was just about to bring the Bronco back in to the conversation. Yeah, the Bron- Broncos are bad a, eh? and and uh, likewise the uh, like eighty eight to ninety one K five Blazers. Yeah, those things are pretty. Rare they're too. really I don't big. Know what they had for they're really big, really yeah. big. I had a. a they're a still six- badass. I had a sixty nine Bronco, and I liked that it was had coils in the front. You picked yeah. that year specifically. It just happened to be the year that I purchased. <laughs> yes. I had an 81 Bronco, I believe, yeah. that even though it was a rusty bucket, it meant business. Yep. It was so stout. you were TTBs, though, right? I was TTBs and the 300 CID in line six. Which is a torque monster. Which is They're great. It really is. It's awesome. You look yeah. at the numbers and you're like, wow, what a piece of dog crap. And then you drive it and you're like, wow, I'm spinning tires in third. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> going, going, I mean, on, on a gravel road, but I was yeah. really pushing her and she did not complain. I think that was actually a cool thing about like the original Broncos. And it also goes with the, uh, did the FJ, no. So the 60 had leaf springs up front, right? So your your what was your generation Bronco? The like the first gen Broncos. No. Yeah. The, yeah. The yeah. No, I'm just trying to think the way, whatever the year range is, but it was just nice that they had uh, you know, coils oh, up 60, front. Oh, 66 to 77. Those all those had coils up front, right? It was it was pretty much yeah. like a long arm system, you know. You have your big like trailing arms that come out and Those are radius arms. Radius, yeah, radius radius arms. That's a proper pronunciation, but mm-hmm. I mean, He's into German cars everybody. Yeah, He's not yeah, it's different. Uns long arm radius <laughs> suspensia. <laughs> we don't know fucking German, but. <laughs> but no, I mean just for for how old that damn thing is and how, how much travel I'm sure you could pull because out of. You that have thing. one in your shop, right? Yeah, it's actually uh, it's getting sold on Monday. Don't tell him it's that. gone. Um, now the guy's bringing it to Colorado. It's going to be like his around town ranch truck type of thing. So hopefully it gets good use out there. Um, yeah. Didn't that car? 
Didn't that Bronco originate in Colorado? I think it started and it went in, to Utah and yeah. then here, and now it's going back to Colorado. Yep. Yeah. Full it circle. Made a full swing. Excellent. Um, but yeah, I mean, just the the design of that whole thing is pretty rad, and to see what you could do with those things just straight from the factory, I'm sure it'd be pretty fun to take that thing out to the desert and see what it could do. So there are a couple of more that we haven't mentioned that the wagoneer, we, would, we the wagoneer, <laughs> that we will be in people's bad graces if we don't bring up the international harvesters. Oh what, yeah, what is that like a does a tractor or corn biners? Yes, yeah. mm. they bin. make a eighteen wheeler or what? <laughs> Currently, yes, they make 18 wheels. <laughs> Interesting. Huh. I don't know why you'd ever wheel something like that. 77 to 79, Scout 2s, right? I love them. That's They're... probably better than the 800 A's. The 800 A's were... I think those are some of the most attractive vehicles ever made. The Scout 2? Really? Oh, yes. Wow. Really? The simplicity of the, the design. lines are Okay, so let's terrible. put... let's put so uh, good looking. Because everybody <laughs> thinks Broncos are Scouts and Scouts are Broncos. In my opinion, the Bronco, as few lines as both of these vehicles have... The Broncos have better line. Yeah, than the I agree. Scout. I mean, I, I I understand what you're saying. I've definitely gawked over um, some of the really nice the the fenders that come up next to the hood have this arch in them. Yeah, kind of like a shark fin thing yes. going to the back, and it looks fantastic. Yes, but there's something about just like the rounded box with circular headlights and a square grill of a Scout that just gets me going. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now we know what gets them going, everybody. Oh, yeah. Doesn't take much. What Let's... about a Dodge Power Wagon? Oh! Wow, even better than the International. <laughs> Power sorry. Wagons are super cool. Pack... I really dig yeah. those things. I actually saw one the other day on, like, 40 Super Swampers, and the thing just looks so rad. about, like, the diesel so Power good. Wagon, like the first-gen Cummins, or are you talking, like, Whatever, Power Wagon? No, old, like, from back old Power Wagon. 54 back Power Wagon. Oh, yeah. But, see, yes. I don't know enough about them and what they came with from the fact you know from the factory for this argument could you go get a dodge power wagon from the factory and outperform an fj40 of the same era i don't know uh-huh. like don't we know. need to go and buy some and see okay yeah, good so, luck with that yeah so of all these rigs what do we what is like the perfect company putting together to make this you know this one that we would we would our ultimate crawler you know what what are the things that somebody goes out and looks for to be to Let's say they don't want to buy a Rubicon, you know? What are the things that they need to look for that they can get, like, Rubicon performance out of something else, you know? Some people hate Wranglers. That's fine. They're, they're, they're everywhere. So what what should someone else go and look for and be like, you know, I think I can put that in, like, a similar ballpark of, you know, getting up John Bull or whatever it is. Right. Like, you're trying to get into Whelan, but you don't want a regular Rubicon. Yeah. That's what you're saying? I think unless we, have to, we need to put together a list of what's the criteria, right? Are, is comfort an issue for you? Yeah. Um, are you only going to wheel it? Are you going to trailer it to the trail? Or are you going to drive it to the trail? Um, do you want modern features like air conditioning, fuel yeah. injection? Oh, how much do you want to modify the suspension, you know? Like right. To, to, I mean, you can – people are doing that to Rubicons anyways. Because I think we've talked in podcasts previous where, you know, if you just want to get into wheeling right now, you go out and buy a ZJ because you can get a ZJ for $200 <laughs> yeah. and you can go out and beat the living <laughs> shit out of it. And oh well, it broke or it didn't break or go buy you can another one. Go yeah. buy another one. You can you lift bet it. the front axle and you just go get another one. You just go get yeah. another one. Yeah, you know they're throwaway cars. Um, but if you want to be go out and get something that's kind of serious that you could that you could wheel it right now um, in a budget, and then eventually over the years you can upgrade it to maybe you know the level of your buddies or or whoever. Um, maybe that's the question we're trying to answer, right? I yeah, I'm all and in those parameters i always am looking at durability because i don't like spending money and i like I having confidence in my vehicle right and i think the biggest thing that's deterred me from that in certain cars has been like i'm not sure this vehicle can handle that and if it can't it's going to be expensive to fix so i think you're looking for definitely a rear locking differential at least would be really puts you on the next level um and that's not too hard to find that's a pretty popular option as far as people who are building like off-road specific vehicles um, or off-road uh, geared, you know, towards that in mind. And then um, solid axles. And I think the frame matters. I mean, we've seen a couple of Jeeps come in here that, you know, Scott <laughs> blasted their stuff, <laughs> just hitting something too hard. <laughs> and uh, so a boxed frame or just a really stout frame goes a long way to me. So those, those are my, and I'm like super utilitarian in that 
aspect. So I would even go further. And I almost wish somebody, even one of the, we they would come out with like, um, you know, like a Spartan spec vehicle today that had like roll down windows and just like no, no, almost no interior, no, commodities no just, Bluetooth, no. Just, like, <laughs> just it's just no brutal. carpet either, like just like that rubber matted floor, exactly, you know? and you metal. Just close it out. And, it would be yeah, amazing. Cool. I think I think it would be super inexpensive to make, and it would be very useful. And that's what they're doing. That's what they pretty much do with. Uh, Land cruisers do overseas, you know, land cruiser trucks and lots of they sell um, something like what used to be called the Troopy. Um, mm. They sell stuff like that. That's just super utilitarian and it's meant to be beat on. And that's why you buy it. But now with the land cruisers that we get in the States are very, very you know, luxurious, luxurious. Yeah, I agree. I think it would be really cool to be able to go down to Toyota today and buy a Tacoma that has roll up windows, no carpet. Um you know, no body control module or anything. And a solid front axle. Well, you, could, you could do that, but you end up with, like, the little two-wheel drive, like, plastic bumpers, you know, like the black plastic bumpers, and you just get this car that – I don't think they even sell that model in four-wheel drive, to be honest. That's well, what I'm know, saying, though. Like, they, roll-up windows. No, and, but they need to. They That's need to, saying. absolutely. They should make one – I mean, I think the first company that comes out with – do you guys know what I mean by Spartan? Spartan Locker? No, like the – like, You're going to hide a bunch of people in it? <laughs> I see. What that's Trojan. Oh, no, just like you watch the movie Three Hundred. Bare bones, utilitarian, like the the least amount of things that you need to survive would be was is the gotcha. way that I'm so like, to it as. No shirt, a shield, yes, a sword, yes, and a skirt, exactly. Got it. And some nice, uh, some nice like Spartan leather sandals. <laughs> would Why be good. Leather sandals would be nice. Those are coming back. A lot of the girls I are know, wearing them nowadays. Right? No, I think that would be cool. I think. What if you could go down to Jeep right now? And get a uh, a Jeep with no body control module in it, but it was four wheel drive. It had lockers, maybe not the e lockers. You know, maybe it's you know it's just a limited slip or some weird you know something different. Like but Detroit in it or something. Everything like helps. That. Yeah, yeah, just some Detroit locker. And there's there's I don't know. It'd be kind of an interesting situation to have. You know, not a no shift on the fly. There's actually like three sticks in it or whatever, where you've <clears> got a. Cool. You know, actually pick it, get out, lock the hubs. I would buy that right now so fast. I would go. Right? And yeah. bare it bones. would be cheap, too. You know what I mean? You don't have to go spend forty grand on a four-door Rubicon. You can go pick this thing up, whatever it may be, for like 20 or 18 or whatever it comes out to, you know? And it's like, here you go, bare bones. We know you're going to, like, just wheel the shit out of this thing. So, have at it, you my, know? My buddy has one of the new um, TRD 4x4 Tacomas, and it's got, like, the JBL touchscreen, big old dash thing, and then Dude, the whole super Gucci. It's the all comes the down crawl, to. like the crawl control stuff, and I'm just like, uh, I don't know. Give me a tape player so I can plug in like my iPod with one of those tape things <laughs> and like four low, and I got a right foot, so that's my crawl control. Like yeah. I don't need any of this BS. How aren't the uh, like Mopar? Can't you go to a Mopar dealer and get a uh, drag race? bare bones yeah yeah, the yeah. Three, the three speed the drag pack or whatever it is yeah right so you're getting a yeah. bare bones car right they already make mopar already makes a bare bones drag car that you can buy the charger is it a charger or challenger challenger it's I a think. challenger yeah. and it's like no interior yeah like it's literally a drag oh, it's, race car it's only for that I think, and they've been i think they're, they're non-vind i think they're like non-vind or non they make like a hundred of them a year or something like right that. so why not make a jeep version of that yeah that somebody could buy and and totally pimp out they're doing, and they've been doing drag packs since what, like the late a 60s? A long time. But yeah. Furthermore, okay, so I think we've covered off the lot. Now, what is the best vehicle to mod? What is the friendliest vehicle to modify? I, Jeep. Yeah. Only The only reason why I say Jeep is because there's millions of aftermarket companies making crap for the Jeep. They it's saturated like, the market. It's like a Lego. Jeep, it's, it's, everything on a Jeep can unbolt and come off. It, on a Toyota, you don't, you can't like take a door off or a fender off very easily. On a Jeep, you can literally unbolt that entire Jeep in an afternoon. I think Tacomas need to start doing that because if I had a four door Tacoma and I could take all the doors off of it, that would be so cool. I'd be so, I'd be so about that. He's they do that do that. Guy. It's called a Land Cruiser. Oh, we just don't get them here. So I have a question because I want to know: Do you need a straight axle to 
do some good off roading, or can no. you do it with regular AR? No, you can do it with IFS, of course. <clears throat> that third gen Forerunner, remember? I was out there falling. Yeah. All, you're, you were on a Jeep with had 37, yep. 35s? 37s. 37s. Okay. You're going every single place I was. No yeah. big no deal. No issues. And so, so it's it honestly it, it all depends on the design because there's different designs of uh you know independent front suspension and if it's four wheel drive it'll do the stuff it just won't necessarily do all of it and depending on how like well thought out how easily moddable if you can lift it that was a cool thing about the design without like maxing out and destroying your alignment and getting like terrible camber and uh, yeah. all kinds of just changes throughout the I guess travel that you have that was what was cool about the third gen as well as the tacomas is you know if you did just a little three inch coilover bilstein of 8100 or even like the foxes the kings they make their oem like uh aftermarket coils yours was what an 800 dollar, and we called it a junkyard lift yeah so it wasn't all from the junkyard but we did pull some those uh trd bilsteins off of uh uh tundra yeah we took we took the progressive springs off of tundra we bought the actually the Bilsteins that I bought were also the eighty one hundreds were off a of Tundra as well. The rear the rear shocks were just some Fox. ten inch travel Fox like smooth bodies, and then those uh, coils were those were F two eighty front coils, I think. Yeah, and then we made a little drop bracket for the pannered bar in the rear, and then it was awesome. It was good go. It worked real well. Yeah, and uh, you know that was even if you were to just keep if those Bilsteins that were originally coming off of it was a uh, First gen Tundra, I think it was, oh yeah, first gen Tundra like TRD or whatever. Um, if those were still working, you know, you could put this whole lift together for two two hundred fifty bucks. You got a three inch lift, and honestly, it was uh, it just functioned quite well. It did. I remember going down this like pretty steep hill, and halfway through it, it had another like dip that went in, mm-hmm. and I went down it, and I was like, damn, that was sketchy, you know, like yeah, I don't know, how, like, you know, I was like kind of puckered <laughs> up from it. And then I look in the rear view and I see Jake going down in the forerunner. And literally I remember seeing like uh like probably fourteen or fifteen inches between the wheel and the wheel well in the rear. Like the thing just drooped out super hard. <laughs> it was awesome. And I was like, Oh no, he's about to go end over end and then he just like let go and the whole thing just kinda like boogied down it and everything was good and I was like, Jesus, that looks so sketchy. <laughs> like just seeing the the rear just like fully flexed out and like I was like, oh, man, he's about to lose it right now. Here he goes. That was a fun rig. That was really it was. fun. It yeah. was. I think if you had some good tires on there instead of, like, you had oh, yeah, pretty much had street radials still. on it. Yeah, like, dude. <laughs> it was fine. There were nothing crazy. Dude, but I think terrains. if that thing got some, like, good terrain tires on it, I think it would have been even more than capable. Yeah. You know? Oh, I agree. So. And that, that uh, the whole, I mean, it was cool on that one. You have the center locking differential, so you could technically run it as an all-wheel drive or whatever you want to yeah. call it. but. And I think that's one thing that people don't. A lot of people try to tell me that there's no difference between all-wheel drive and, there's, and four-wheel drive, and it's just kind of comical to me because, yes, technically all your wheels are driving, but there's a lot of different, you know, mechanical differences and, uh, you know, the way it functions is different. So don't, nece- don't necessarily think that you can take an all-wheel drive and go out and do what a four-wheel drive does because you, like, you might not have a low range, that's yeah. for sure. You might not have a center-locking differential, which means that, that's going to act like another differential, and if both your rear wheels like get stuck, get start spinning, you know, it's going to do the same thing that like when you have a two wheel drive, one's spinning, one's not. So, mm-hmm. I do agree with David though. The Jeep, you you can't really beat the aftermarket support of Jeep. That's true. It's- I would think that the Jeep Wrangler has the longest reigning time span of superiority as far as right out of the dealer floor off road, and then when you are ready to upgrade. It's infinite possibilities of upgrade. That car is so accessorized, you know. So yeah, yeah. I had the brand new JL right out of the gate. I think you can get like a two and a half inch lift Fit for like two hundred bucks, and you can run thirty sevens. That's ridiculous. On a friggin' brand new Jeep right out of the door, you know. That's pretty cool. So well, Jeep is definitely answering, you know, the call. The call, <laughs> and and if for anybody, if anybody was to walk into my shop right now and say, "I want to get into off roading today," what do I need to look for? Uh, go find a Wrangler you can afford, because it doesn't matter what year you pick or what area you pick. I can soup it up for you, and you'll be oh, fine. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even if it's a YJ and it's got square headlights and leaf springs, it doesn't matter. Go get it. If you can get one cheap, go get it. We'll make it off roadable very easily. I mean, how many vehicles have we lifted in here, and how many times do we lift a Jeep and it just goes smooth and they're out wheeling, and then we lift something else and we're dealing with oh, geometry problems nightmare. for freaking oh, yeah. days trying to get the thing 
so that it'll actually drive straight down the road. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wanted to add a dishonorable mention for the FJ80 in this category purely because I I love them and I look into <laughs> them so much. Um the axles and the way that oh, the steering, the trailing arms and the steering and the knuckles and how that whole system works. I have no idea why they're so popular to modify because it is a cluster. Like the <laughs> whole thing, the the trailing arms cruise under the front axle and then attach to the front and you're like why and so then that means you'd have unless you have uh you're gonna have pinion like pinion pinion angle changes throughout the travel with that right because it's technically i don't know i'd have to think about it to draw it to see. it's it's just a silly way to do it and then the knuckles how the steering works you're yeah. just it's ass backwards and especially when compared to jeep where you're just like throw a high steer on it and you're good to go. Yep. This is like, I've literally spent hours engineering something where I'm like, how do, would you to protect the t- tire Things. when you're, no, never mind. Yeah, I'm it not makes you get wonder what, anyway. why did they do that? What was the reasoning? I mean, these engine, I mean, especially Toyota, their engineers are no dummies, right? So what did, why, what it'd be interesting to see. Why did we, why did they design it this way? Did they design it this way? Cause there was some sort of cost involved and it, and it needed to be done that way. Or did they think it was going to be some great new design and it just didn't pan out? I didn't think they thought that people were going to modify it at all because, or I mean, to any degree, almost they they were really just building it specifically to be an off the floor. Well, and I would agree thing. with you with that, and I agree with you that Toyota is still that way. Yeah, that Toyota when they make a vehicle, they are making the best possible vehicle they can make, and they do not want you messing with it. No, no, this is the best possible vehicle. Why would you ever modify it? Whereas Jeep goes, yeah, cool, man. America, you want to yeah. go for it. I mean, imagine, and I love. I think I've talked about that before, is like engineering through culture. I mean, they're they're Japanese. They're like, we're going to do it the best way, the best possible way. And and, and if you would touch it in any other way, it's, it's not going to work. Like, well, yeah. and it's insulting to them too, right? Yeah. Why would you change what they consider to be perfect? And I can see it. I get it. That's a valid argument if, uh, as far as any modding a lot of cars. Like, okay, there was a room full of engineers who designed it this way. Why would you change it? But but if you look back in the history of the United States, car manufacturers, a lot of things were made certain ways because it was cheap. Cost, exactly. You know what I mean? Like, this is really cheap to do this, so we're going to do it this way. Yeah, but it's not exactly the right geometry on this, you know, Chevy Camaro, whatever. This is the cheap way. You just steal the suspension off of that car over there that we put on that other Chevy Impala and put it on the Camaro. And it's like, well, all right, I guess yeah. so. <laughs> you know, even and- though I think that battle got... Uh, there, there's some story, I'd have to look it up, but there's some story where the Camaro, where the guy wanted to use the uh, Corvette suspension on the Camaro because he knew it was better. Yeah. And uh, there not? was some battle back in the day. Somebody out there who knows stuff about that can call us up. Can chime in. But uh, I would I would agree, uh, Toyota, uh, right out of the showroom floor, is pretty good. I think Jeep is, the Wrangler's got to be right there at the top. They're really the only ones in America right now who are making, like, an off-road vehicle to off-road in. Because what, yeah. like, go back to the other companies. I mean, Ford came out with the Raptor. That was their off-road vehicle. Oh, which, I didn't even think about that piece of crap. Yeah. Which people <laughs> try and off-road those, and they end up snapping axles because well, they jump the thing 50 feet. They well, market a, it Straight to flat, you know? Yeah. Of, they market it as an out-of-the-box pre-runner, and yeah. it's not. It literally has 12 inches of suspension travel. You're, you're better like, off getting the Toyota uh, pre-runner. Which no, is, it's, you, it's decent. Like, it, I'm not going to say it's, it's the best thing out there, and you should go do the Baja in it. But it's like the thing. You, I don't it know, does, but no, it, let's be honest: nothing from the factory was designed to be jumped. Yeah, ever. that's true. No. Ever. Even no. Polaris and the Razors and people they like that are not supposed to be jumped. No, they're trail. They're trail rigs. It's yeah. All a, so the Raptor know? is a rad vehicle, but uh, I think if you're going to buy a Raptor, you need to be buying a Raptor because you want to go fast off road and you want to have some fun. But you really don't want to carry anything ever in the bed, ever. No, I think it's. A oh real- yeah, we saw the guy with the pallet of bricks in the bed of his oh, yeah, Raptor. No, cinder blocks. He was rubbing like tired defender <laughs> almost. Hilarious. I think. I mean, I when I think about building my own personal truck, I think about building it how they built the Raptor with like I think twelve inches of suspension would be really plush. I think a nice, nice soft all the way around, but not necessarily to tow anything, and not to like you know you're not going to go. 50 60 through the whoops or anything but if you hit some boogie on a back road you can definitely just mash through it like yeah they're rad trucks problem is is that i i agree ford marketed it as uh 
like a trophy a truck, fully blown yeah. trophy <laughs> truck, and then that's... and it probably feels really good at fifty or sixty off road, and you probably start going, man, this truck is pretty rad. Then you hit a jump and it's all over. It's too late, and you bend the thing. Yeah, a and lot of see... them have a little wrinkle in the back of the cab, right where the bed comes up and smacks it. <laughs> It's hilarious. I think they do that from the factory now, so you don't have to do it. Right, they pre wrinkle it. Yeah, yeah, they pre wrinkle. <laughs> don't they have? A, didn't they just release the uh, Ranger version now? Oh, I don't know. That'd oh, be cool. I, I, I think not. that's a, that's in the makes. They're trying to make like a Ranger version of the Raptor. And well, you, they're bringing back the Bronco too. Yeah. Oh, come on. They've been saying that for literally like twenty six fucking years. There's pictures of it. There's online. picture of it online yeah. now. There's, there's always pictures. been pictures. I mean, Every single pictures car show, for, for there's like new pictures. Um, the internet doesn't lie. And then you'll see it in like a movie. They'll like put the concept car in a movie. Like, oh look, it might be here, but mm-hmm. it's not. And you're buzz, like, oh, no, I'm never gonna I think it's really funny because when when they film that stuff, I I mean, I'm talking about the 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 Raptor Ranger that I saw. This guy is absolutely blasting it. And I'm pretty sure they're in Australia. He is yeah. just blasting it through the stuff. And they have, like, cool dirt sounds and music and stuff. But if you're actually, I guarantee you, if you're in the car, it sounds like this. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> and you're just like, but over it, just sounds like. <laughs> oh, the new Raptor Ranger. Very, very smooth. Very good. Well, then they have the, we talked about the power <laughs> wagon earlier, but right, we... we kind of glazed over since we're talking about bringing cars back aren't they doing the new dodge power wagon or what are they calling it oh the ram yeah, runner thing? oh the ram, ram runner. runner or whatever yeah, yeah the ram runner. i think supposed to compete with the uh raptor right well chevy came out with their version of it i forget what that thing was called never heard exactly of it. you haven't heard no <laughs> and the thing was hideous they took the front end of like a regular silverado and they like smashed it forward to make it look all like overbite ish and they yeah. put like bolt-on over fenders on it and everybody loves bolt-on i saw one and i was like who the hell just debaucherized this and i was like oh no that's that's how it came from that's that's how it came from the factory like i'm a big chevy fan like you know and to see that i was like oh no oh no this isn't what it should be (laughs) like don't do it you know if they threw a freaking like badass duramax or you know, cool motor in it, then I guess it's kind of cool. But the what about of the uh, Colorado? We kind of glazed over the new Z seventy one four wheel drive. I think those Colorado. have lockers, I was about to or at say, least a rear locker. Yeah, I think they have front yeah. and rear lockers. Those really. things are pretty badass. Well, do you see now from the factory they're making it so that the fender in the front has like cutouts? So you, when you, like I was saying before, you know your approach angle is better. So they Ooh. like cut out the front bumper, and you just see like giant wheels sticking out. You know, that sounds it mean. looks pretty sweet. Yeah, I think we can't discount that Z71. No, mm-hmm. I don't Colorado. think so either. And they have those... Uh, what engine are they putting in them now? Better? Or are they still running that stupid five-cylinder? <laughs> you, no, I think they're better yeah. now, and I think you can get those in a four-cylinder Duramax. Oh. Which would be... I'm, I don't yeah, know if you can get the Z71 in the Duramax, though. So. We're like 41 years late to the fucking like, diesel small <laughs> motor scene here in America. It's Everybody's so going R2.8, right? Yeah. That's the new catch engine. New engine for everything. That means R2.8. Well, you know what? At, uh, I'm still on the 4BT. Yeah, you still a 4BT guy? Somebody on. give me a, I'm on oh, Actually, BT. you know what I'm on? Uh, like, give me a 6BT. I need a boat need a anchor, boat anchor big on enough the... to stop a <laughs> giant oil tanker. A Gallo Perfect. 12 or a Gallo 24? The What is it? The Is it an Isuzu motor? That's the 4BT, but it's... 4BT. And T-D-E or something like 4BTD1 that. 4BTD1. It's like the same thing. It is literally the same thing. And it came in over cab. Uh, if you can, if you ever on Craigslist and you say yourself an over cab, a Zuzu like twenty foot box truck that's a turbo diesel, like Get most it. likely it has that four B that turbo four BT in it, and you want it. So I'm looking for one of those for a while. Six BT weighs. I it's think a, it weighs. It's eleven hundred pounds. I think. Nice. No, it's. I was going to say you could probably set. Is it like, really? It's you could, heavy as fuck. You when you're thinking about putting a six BT into an in, into a into a vehicle. You have to consider: Does this engine weigh more than my whole vehicle without the six BT in the transmission? Right. Because I bet you the six BT with its transmission weighs exactly the same as whatever chassis and body oh you're putting my it in. God, the ISB five point nine, uh, which is the motor after the six BT, that was eleven hundred pounds dry. Yeah. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> I'm telling you, have you ever seen a six BT just is... sitting on a pallet? Oh yeah, they're massive. It's two they're, pallets. It's absolutely they're... giant. Thick. Yeah, they are thick. <laughs> so, uh, after further investigation, the Z71 comes in a 2.5 liter four cylinder 
a 3.6 liter V6, which is the LGX motor, which we're putting in the uh, the new Catfish, or 2.8 liter Duramax. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. That is that a solid setup, good. and with the with the V6 in it, you're looking at 36 grand. Does it come with a front locker? Ooh, I'm about to find that out. Yeah. Talk to me. Talk, 1,100 talk pounds is so ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Worth it. All that torque, man. Yeah, as much I'm torque bought. as you want. Yeah, but have you seen those things scoot and boogie? Dude, it's they ridiculous. Go. They don't care. They're like, I weigh 1,100 pounds. Sorry, nobody told me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, factory rear locker with the Z71. All right, that's decent. Yeah, that's a great truck. I think Skid plate over truck. the front transfer case. Or over the There's a front case. transfer case? What over does the that transfer do? case. Stop. Stop it. Please. Stop. Any other uh, random vehicles? I mean, there's. we didn't even touch uh, Rover, which... They're cool, but if you look at the guys that either... It, they either really, really thrown together and crappy, or there's guys that have put way too much time into something that... Has given them nothing but problems. Yeah, but remember, I'd like to talk to the guys who back in the day. Remember, there was like the Trans American thing, right? And it was sponsored by Camel cigarettes, right? And had yeah. The Camel logo on the side of the Rovers, and they would like drive around the world in these things. Yeah. I wonder like how many breakdowns they had. Oh, I know. Because it was, you know, it was touted as, "Hey, this thing will forge rivers and go through jungles." Where and... did you find parts? Suzuki Samurai. I love them. I, I love. You them. know, I like. Hey, cattle... Roberts is for sale. Be... I don't know if it's been oh, sold or not. Really? But he's selling it. That's neat. Because it it does only I'm pretty sure what it has Dana thirty fives right. No. What do they have? I honestly I don't know, but they're tiny. They're small, but the fact is that it is small. That's so true. It's like making the best out of itself. It's you not, put a Dana thirty five yeah. under a golf cart, you might not bend it. So <laughs> maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe they are cool. They are cool. And there are some people who make them very capable. I mean, you do the YJ uh, like leaf spring swap, and you can get, I think, four and a half inches of lift. Something ridiculous. That's what Robert did. I mean, that thing was up there with big old tires and everything. Wasn't there a Dodge version of that, too, called like a... That was the Raider. The Raider. The Raider. Those things are sweet. Those things are rad. That was the same as a sidekick or something, right? Yeah, Yeah. pretty much. But I don't know. I just think the look of them is so basic. It's like a two-door Montero, right? They're so cool. Then there was like the Geo Tracker. Oh, now those are terrible. Those are a little no, more rounded. Those are terrible. Wasn't that I the same those. thing? <laughs> that looked like it, it looked like it came out of a 1980s movie that was trying to be like in the future. Oh, yeah, yeah like yeah, yeah, yeah. some poke post They're like, in 2021, crap. everything yeah. <laughs> will look like this Geo Tracker. And you're Please, like, no. That was the one that was in me. here the other day again. No, no, no. Done. That was uh, that was an Isuzu v- V-Cross. Yeah, V-Cross. That was a V-Cross. Those oh. things look like a Nike shoe. Those are oh, cool, yeah. though. Maybe that's what I'm thinking really of, actually. Yeah, you're thinking like, of the V-Cross. I'm thinking of my thing. I don't know. It looks like it. There's a lot of buttons. There's a lot of buttons. My aunt had one of those. It was badass. It was Iron Man edition. Nice. Man. Yeah, what else is out there? I mean, let's think this through. We we, we almost, hit all the big manufacturers? I'm almost sure I'm, I'm missing one of my favorites. I can feel it in my bones. The first gen Forerunner was dope. What about a G Wagon? G Wagons oh, are. They have front and rear uh, locking differentials, you know? Yeah, G Wagons. I mean, as Gucci as those things are, right out of the gate, those things They're ready are to go. pretty capable, right? Well, that and like the, I want to say like mid, maybe like 2005 or so. Uh, Range Rovers, those things are pretty capable too. Like all the older uh, the, the discoveries LR4? and like all those things from back in like early two oh, thousands. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think the, uh, before the LR four. What was the one before the LR four? That was the, the disco, the Discovery. Yeah, it's got the weird right. back window in it. You know, those like, are great. Those things are they're super, super good. cheap though for a reason. Yeah, because they're, they're just dropping unreliable. sleeves left and <laughs> yeah. right and just all it's, kinds it's of still a British car. Yeah, put an LS in it and maybe you have a different story. I don't yeah. know. Are we talking? So there used to be also the van converters back in the day, Pathfinder, Quigley, and then eventually the only one that is around today is Sportmobile. You just have to – it's your first child that you pay Yeah, or and a leg. That? Yeah, okay, got it. And your so, left right. nut. <laughs> Do you guys remember the Centurion? Yes. Centurion. Which one was that? It oh. was a crew cab Ford with a Bronco bed. Or it was a four-door Bronco. Yeah. Essentially, with a Bronco bed with a Bronco bed. <laughs> so, essentially, it's a it's a crew cab Bronco. They would take a, a crew cab Ford truck, cut the back, and then take a Bronco and graft it onto the back. So you had a you know the the back seat actually didn't have a bulkhead. You could go all the way into the back like a Bronco. Now, and okay, they had really really awesome interiors too. So the back seat folded down into a bed. Yep. You could still remove the camper from the back just like a Bronco and make the back half a truck. Yep. 
Are we the, talking like 80s? No, this is uh, 90s. They were doing them in the 90s. Oh, it was 90s, so like OJ style Bronco? OJ style. Okay. Um, so look up Centurions, man. That was an aftermarket four-wheel drive vehicle that I just thought was rad. Oh, it's the coolest thing. You know those Chevy pickups? Like the uh, the C, well, I guess they're all or K series is the four-wheel drive, but uh, mm-hmm. 70s, 80s Chevy pickups, front and rear solid axles. You can get some pretty reasonable axles under it, I think, too. Like, if you get the 2500, it has, like, Dana 60s. But they uh super functional trucks. And, you know, people still wheeling them to this day. Real stout transmission. I mean, you got a Chevy 350 in it, so. That was the uh, vehicle of choice for military auctions, right? You yeah. You want to get the Chevy trucks. Because uh, a lot of those military trucks uh, would come with the, the bitchin' lockers uh-huh. and all the cool transfer cases and all the rad stuff, but a bare bones cap, right? Yeah. Because it's a military vehicle. Uh, and then you get the 6.2 diesel in it, which is kind of a piece of shit, but you get like 22 miles to the gallon. So that's always cool. Yeah. Uh, Jake, if you would uh, surmise why I don't want an H1 Hummer real quick. <sighs> well, <laughs> d- well, I He's guess He's a that resident depends. army, man. <laughs> you, well, now you make me well, I don't want to talk anymore. <laughs> you know, people, uh, triggered they, him. They, they all want Look these Humvees did, and stuff and- you know the suspension design on them is real cool. It's interesting. It's got portal axles, like it's IFS, IRS. They'll go a lot of places, but man, you take that thing over like fifty miles an hour, and it's it's just not a fun. It's not well, a watch, fun thing to ride. It's well, underpowered. Extremely. Watch the Dirt Every Day episode on it. Didn't the Dirt Every Day guys, Fred and uh, Dave or whatever, the Dirt Every Day guys, they bought a Hummer at the auction. Oh, did they? And they stripped it down to nothing, so it was like just <laughs> gutted. Right? It was like yeah. two seats, and they put a little roll bar on it. But then they put big, bigger tires on it, but it has that diesel engine in it. And they couldn't even go up like the simplest sand dune. It oh, was just, yeah. it was just They're nothing. And then they yeah, were going but... through whoops, see if they could go through whoops fast. And the thing was just bouncing God, like a God, seesaw. God, boom, God, boom, boom, so <laughs> stiff. You know, the bare bones ones, like, very stiff, you know? And then they put, uh, what is it, an 1151? They took those and they put a shitload of armor on them. Just way too soft. That whole thing is rocking the whole time you're in it because they put, I don't know, a couple thousand pounds of, like, steel plate on there. <laughs> but And then they threw a Banks turbo on it, but you're still turboing, like, a, a 350 block that was converted to diesel that never should have done. That's just, that's a terrible design. I think if you were to get the H1, you would have to do the Magnum off-road. Wasn't it Magnum back in the day, or do they still they do did, They did a cum and swap, or they did the newer, uh, what the newer is it, Duramax. Duramax? Yeah, the newer yeah. Duramax swaps. Like Those guys were taking H1 Hummers and making them legit. Those are cool. Those are great. And it, it, they have a zero, what is it, zero degree approach angle. Yeah. So you can literally drive up to a brick wall, and then if you go slow, low gear, whatever, drive up the wall. So that's rad. Yeah, I don't know. See where, I mean, that's cool. Well, if you're one, yeah, they're just so long and wide, and I guess it really is effective. But so now those things are phased out too, right? In the military, when, aren't they phasing those out? And they're looking for a, a new been, version. Yeah, well, yeah, sure. They're, they're trying. Nobody has. Ain't I'd rather go get like some that. big old Oshkosh or something, you know? And, oh, the M Raps, the Mat Vs, shit like that. Like yeah. the big, mm-hmm. huge ones. They're cool, but they're just super top heavy because you know you. Well, I wouldn't be, get an armor plated one. I don't. I don't. Oh, you're talking about like the eight by eight that they used to have down the street. Yeah. Now those are rad. Yeah, those Real go fast. fast. Put a container. You can have like a container on it, right? That. Oh, drop your little Connex house off. Yeah, like, but have like different containers for different things. Like, oh, I'm going camping, so you pull the Connex box that's got all your like. It's like a little house. It's like a camper. Mm-hmm. Then, oh, I'm just going to the desert for the day. You have another Connex box that's like full of I motorcycles go and toys. Today. You grab another. One. Grab another one. It's got all your fishing gear in it, right? You got like 20 boxes. Might full as well just different... put a boat inside of it. Yeah, know? have one with a boat in it. Our podcast listeners are all multimillionaires now. Yeah. I'm guessing. Hey, dreams are free, guys. Okay. That's true. You guys derailed this conversation, anyways. So that's I'm gonna, why write, I'm gonna get that tattooed on me. Dreams are free. David Beckett. You get that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And that one and something about when you told me that you can bury one, your one day mu- closer. One day no, when you can bury your money in your coffin, but you can't take it with you. And I was like, hmm. <laughs> and then I bought Wasted all money. Of it. I bought a motor that I didn't have money from from you. Yeah. So now we're there. <laughs> now we're there. We are there. Well, you got it, spend it. Pretty much, right? I'm living that to the fullest right now. Die I'm tomorrow. So broke. <laughs> Hell yeah. But you almost have an awesome But I almost have a running L S motor, so that's Christ. That's what I got going Horses for me. Horseshoes and hand grenades. <laughs> so we, what else we have? We have any new news, old news, real quick before we wrap it up. New news, car show, June 9th. Yeah, be there. That's, that's it is on the set. Are we talking about the thing that you guys are building? Sure, we're building a little RTI ramp, so you can come out and get a official RTI number uh, on your four wheel drive. See how much it articulates. 
thing's not very little. It's like almost as tall as me. It's big. It's a big chunk of steel. She's a beefy girl. She's a beefy girl. June 9th, right here at Benton Motorsports. Go to our website. Uh, look it up. Actually, we have on our Facebook page, uh, we have the event uh, on there if you want to go and get all the specs. Uh, food, live music. Should be a pretty rad day. Good food at that. And yeah. Good music. Yeah, the um, Born in Brooklyn, I think, is the name of the food truck. And then the other one is Chips by the Sea or something like that. There's a couple of different food trucks coming. Do they do fish and chips? Uh, probably. Tacos, things it's like that. Better. His what name are... is Chip, so I'm hoping he does fish oh, and chips. Oh, it's just Chip by the Sea. Yeah, it's his name <laughs> is Chip. I'm just hanging out. I don't know about you. What about the uh, trophies? got trophies at yeah we got trophies there. man come out and you could win a prize these prizes are totally subject to what we feel is cool or not cool and yes that's right you can get a trophy for something that's not that cool um you have to be there to win though you have, so to that means you have to be there super not cool extremely not cool we're gonna be probably. selling stuff and if it's in stock and we got, you got, got it <laughs> you've got you're giving away uh 400 percent off gift cards uh no I, where you pay the customer to get work no no, that's our oh. normal business model right now. Oh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> we lose our ass on every job. That's <laughs> great. Uh, I think that's it. Yep. Um, Thanks for listening. Oh, and yeah, GoFundMe's for all of our personal projects will be up soon, so be sure yes. to donate to those. <laughs> GoFundMe's, yes, and then we can talk about <laughs> dumb things we do. Yeah. You want us to do something dumb? Go fund us. Yeah, make us a GoFundMe for like I don't know, just general shop purposes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gem- general shenanigans. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. You guys, I'm guarantee it. Actually, if you get, if we throw a GoFundMe up and people donate to it, we will do some dumb things to entertain you. I agree. Go I to our YouTube page, yeah, watch our current video, and that's just uh, one day in the life of uh, Bent Motorsports. It was a special day. It was a special. It day. It was a very special day. All right, special day. Well, this has been Bent Motorsports. <laughs> hey, you don't got to do that because we have an exit thing, Dave. Duh. <laughs> You're still salty over that. <laughs> Don't tell me what to do, James. <laughs> yes, sir. Right away, sir. This has been the Bent Motorsports Podcast. Thanks for listening in. Be sure to give us a follow on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube at Bent Motorsports. Stay updated on the latest happenings, future projects, videos, and events here at the shop. Remember, guys, at Bent Motorsports, bits in stock, we've got it.